try and stop here and tell me in simple terms why this motherboard is so bad, the board from Erying that they've implemented with this i7 11800H. And in simple terms, they've basically decided to... At Tech Yes City, I always love myself a good CPU and motherboard combo, especially if it is $200 from AliExpress and you get an i7 11800H and a motherboard for that price. But this motherboard and CPU combo unfortunately is going to get one of the worst recommendations I've given out for a product in quite some time and that's mainly due to this brand right here, Erying, implementing one of the poorest VRM solutions I have seen in a extremely long time on a motherboard. So you guys have probably seen the title of the video and I'm going to tell you straight away, this CPU and motherboard combo from AliExpress is an absolute dumpster fire of a deal. Even at $200, and even though the i7-11800H is actually a really good performing CPU, especially when you put it in games and you get this whole setup tuned right, there's just one big factor that lets down this whole combo, and that is from the Erying brand themselves with the motherboards, and more specifically, the motherboards VRM implementation. Here is where they have just gone with, I don't even know what to call this thing, but I'm just gonna call it atrociously bad phase VRM, where you've got here at the default settings, even at 45 watts, when the CPU throttles down from 75 watts to 45 watts base temperatures, this thing will go all the way up to over 90 degrees on a 23C ambient environment, meaning that if you get into summer, this thing's gonna go over 100 degrees on a 45 watt base profile. So that's how bad this motherboard's VRM is to the point where it's much worse than some of the most inexpensive A320 motherboards I've tested in the past from brands that I'd never heard of before. Now, I've never heard of Erying before I was doing this video. You guys recommended that I check them out after I was testing out on a live stream a few months ago. And in fact, you guys on a recent live stream we did yesterday recommended that I check out the i7-12700H combo too. But after seeing the motherboard that they've got in the photos advertised in conjunction with the i7-12700H on that listing for $300, I would be just staying well clear of that thing as well. I am not going to even bother or even entertain the idea of wasting $300 on that combo. But uh, let's get on to the other results with this motherboard here, where if we decide to take it to 75 watts manual after tuning in the BIOS, this is where we can lock in 4.4 gigahertz with an undervolt of 50 millivolts in the offset. So straight away, before we get into these results though with the VRM, I will just interlude and say that the BIOS is tremendously bad, especially in the case of this whole setup where you need to be locking in XMP profiles on a dual channel memory configuration and you need to be getting the highest clock speeds possible. It's okay in the past when I've tested out those uh, one and X, uh, X99 motherboards where they've in conjunction with the CPUs have offered very good value because the VRM temperatures have been good, but they've also had quad channel memory. So you can mitigate a lot of the performance issues just by having quad channel memory on those combinations. But this one here, you really need to get your memory speeds up. You really need to tune the motherboard properly. And it just took me hours to get these configurations set right. But unfortunately, when I got those configurations set right, we were ending up with results even at 75 watts. So we're going over 100 degrees on our VRM in a 23C ambient environment. And if we got up to 100 watts, and I know I shouldn't do this after 75 watts, but I actually started my test in reverse to what I'm showing you guys. So I started off with 100 watts thinking, oh, it'll be okay. And after two minutes, I immediately shut this down because I do not want a $200 paperweight here at Tech Yes City. So Brian, stop here and tell me in simple terms why this motherboard is so bad, the board from Erying that they've implemented with this i7-11800H. And in simple terms, they've basically decided to put on the cheapest, if not the cheapest components I've ever seen on a motherboard on a VRM, to the point where the temperatures are getting so hot, even at 75 watts usage, that they're going over 100 degrees in a 23 degree ambient environment. And so basically this company has skimped out too hard to the point 
where this motherboard in the future it may not be a few months but it may be say another year later this will bust out on you and you'll have essentially a paperweight and you'll have an i7 11800h that's permanently soldered to that motherboard and that's going to be useless as well so after seeing these results i didn't even bother to run the onboard audio test because in my opinion not anyone in the world should be buying this combination given that the 45 watt scores are so bad too. So if you want to use this as a server motherboard, drop the CPU down to really slow temperatures, this motherboard is still, I believe in the long run, going to be problematic for those who want to use it as perhaps a server option. Though in terms of the performance of the i7-800H itself, this thing is an eight core, 16 threaded beast of a CPU that actually performs extremely well. Let's get down to these results and compare it against three other desktop CPU counterparts that offer similar price performance for your dollar with an RTX 3080. Right after the sponsor spot. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and we've tested out four different games here at both 1080p low and ultra settings. Now, I have decided to use on the desktop variant some of my older numbers, so if anything, this will only be in favor of the 11800H with game updates and also driver updates on the RTX 3080. However, let's get into the first game here, Total War, which we've got here on ultra settings a loss for the 11800H against the Ryzen 5 5600 as well as the i5-12400, but then at 1080p low, this CPU does something a little bit weird, and that is it scores the highest average FPS, but the 0.1% low is actually extremely bad in this particular benchmark. Then moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, here's where it falls a little bit behind both the 12400H as well as the Ryzen 5 5600, but it does pull ahead of the Ryzen 5 5500 at both low and ultra settings. Then moving on to Far Cry 6, here's where it scores a loss on both 1080p low and ultra settings and then moving on to ghost recon it does score somewhere in between the again ryzen 5 5500 and the ryzen 5 5600 so it is giving out pretty decent performance but keep in mind this is after i tuned the cpu and tuning on this thing did actually take quite a lot of time especially locking in the memory profiles where i had to go back and forward between different settings and try and work things out because initially when i tried to configure the memory settings it was just spitting out 2400 megahertz consistently then i had to set a crucial setting in there right protector false as well as manually adjust all my clock speeds and the tdp limits so this thing could boost past 45 watts so looking at those gaming numbers this thing performs actually quite well if the motherboard wasn't so bad these gaming numbers would actually look really good especially beating that of the Ryzen 5 5500. Though the best thing about this CPU, the 11800H, is the Cinebench scores when we started manually tuning it. Keep in mind, I only did single runs for these higher end scores that we got here, but the best score I was managed to pull out of this thing was 4,300 points in Cinebench R23, which is actually quite comparable to that of an 11700K out of the box for a desktop variant, which is extremely impressive results given that it's not just a laptop CPU, but it's a combo that comes in at $200. It's just, again, a shame about that motherboard being such a letdown for this combo. And as for the three CPUs in question, when we compare those in Cinebench R23, we see that this is actually pulling handily ahead but then if we're using a 45 watt profile, which is the max I would use, you've got to significantly downclock the CPU and you're going to consistently get 9,158 points. So in other words, it's much better to go out and get even a Ryzen 5 5500 and a decent B450 motherboard or even an A320 motherboard for that matter. And it's going to give you more consistency in terms of long-term performance, not just for gaming, but also for productivity. So after looking at those productivity numbers and gaming numbers, I can say that the 11800H, the laptop variant, has some great potential. And in fact, I was really impressed with the potential that this CPU has. It's just that this brand Erying has really made an absolute mess on the motherboard VRM to the point where I just wouldn't recommend this knowing how weak that VRM implementation is. So at this stage, the gaming and productivity numbers can be very good, but Here's where we're going to go into the what ifs. What if there's a different manufacturer that can put this combo together? Say, for instance, in the past, we've tested out some Wanan boards. They do a pretty good job. There's also another board from 
uh, Soyo that did a really good job in the past in terms of handling VRM temperatures. What if they were to implement a laptop CPU like the 11800H and get things working properly? Here's where we've got the CPU temperatures here coming in at around 74 degrees at 75 watts. And even when we pushed it up to uh, 100 watts, temporarily, we saw a maximum temperature of around 88 degrees. And this was definitely acceptable on that 75 watt limit, considering we used a snowman cooler, which isn't all that expensive in itself. This was a dual fan solution that you can pick up for around $30. So that's the what ifs and the could be's with the laptop CPUs. They actually have extremely good potential. It's just they're let down in this case by this newcomer, Erying. And unfortunately, I would not be entertaining the idea of getting the i7-12700H a variant either as it looks like it's using the similar or actually the same terrible VRM solution that we've featured in today's video on this motherboard and in fact I went back and rechecked the AliExpress listing it looks like Erying on the 11 series uh, the combo that we're featuring here today they've just gone back and put a different heatsink on the motherboard which is going to make absolutely zero difference at all this thing is still going to run like absolute hot garbage so if anything guys be sure to hit that like button because I've just saved you a $200 paperweight in the future this thing this motherboard Board, make no mistake about it will fail sooner or later with these kind of horrendously bad numbers that i've presented here in the video today anyhow guys with all that aside i hope you enjoyed today's video unfortunately i am 200 down now because i am not going to be using this going forward and i'm not going to be putting it in a build where i'm going to be reflipping it because even at 45 watts the thing is just giving out disastrously bad results with those vrm temperatures and if you're dropping it down to 30 watts, you're going to have a CPU that's <laughs> running uh, south of 3 gigahertz when people are expecting to buy an i7, especially an i7 11th gen. So they're expecting some good performance out of it, and it's just not going to deliver that good performance. So do steer clear of these Erying motherboard implementations at this point in time. And again, I hope I saved you guys a bad purchase. There's much better options out there. I'll put some links in the description below. For instance, I'd much rather get just a simple A320 motherboard and a Ryzen 5 5500 and call it a day. And you will even save money over this combo right here. In terms of looking for a productivity recommendation, well then you can definitely get some of those older Xeons that will crank out the AVX2 instruction sets, even on X99. Anyhow, guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then you know what to do. And also let us know in the comments section below what you think of this combo and the results you've seen in today's video. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from D Red Gaming 1989 And they ask, was thinking of slotting one of these into my B450 Aorus M motherboard and undervolting it, do you think that would be a problem for the VRMs? And they're talking about the 5800X3D, the Ryzen 7, and the B450 Aorus M motherboard is actually a very solid motherboard. So a 5800X3D will work absolutely fine on this motherboard, and you won't even need to undervolt it because it'll be absolutely fine in that configuration. Though undervolting, of course, will help, just like we tried to help out the Erying by undervolting the 11. 800h here but that was to no avail the vrm was just too terrible in the end hope that answers that question and i will catch you guys in another tech video very soon and if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content then be sure to hit that sub button and ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops and i'll see you in the next one peace out for now bye